This is the Bahamas Tonight, the Northern Edition season's greetings to you all. I'm Shashina Roll. As always, it is so great to have you with us. Topping the news tonight, it's back to normal operations. Now at the National Carrier, Bahamas Air issuing a statement this afternoon confirming that the pilot sick out has ended and that the backlog of passengers will be cleared out and all luggage will be delivered for the Christmas holiday. Now, according to the statement, a contingency plan was mobilized through local subservice carriers and wet lease agreements with foreign carriers. However, the Bahamas Airline Pilots Association contacted their union counterparts in the United States, who in turn stood in solidarity with the Bahamas Air pilots and decided they would not fly as a part of the wet lease agreement. Bahamas Air says that three Florida-based carriers who had reached an agreement to provide multiple flights for Bahamas Air withdrew from these agreements, which ultimately resulted in major passenger backlogs. In essence, Bahamas Air says that the contingency plan was sabotaged. Management at Bahamas Air is advising the traveling public that any individual who is not able to travel as scheduled will be compensated and or reaccommodated without penalty. Now, Bahamas Air extends sincerest apologies and deepest appreciation to the traveling public for their understanding and patience displayed during the pilot sick out. In other news, a shooting incident in Eight Mile Rock has left a man hospitalized. Kimberly Mullings was at the scene and she has the details. Police say it was here near the backroom bar and grill where an adult male was shot in Hannah Hill Tuesday evening just before 9 p.m. When ZNS arrived on the crime scene, which was cordoned off, Superintendent Robert Lloyd, officer in charge of CDU in the Northern Bahamas, was able to give us an update on the incident. The police received some information with the last shooting in the area here at Hannah Hill in Mad Rock, uh, the police responded to find a, a male uh, shot to his side. He was taken to the hospital by assisted at the hospital where he's now being treated by a doctor for his injuries. The victim is a 47-year-old male and reports indicate that while at the establishment, he was accosted by two masked men, one armed with a gun who shot him, then made their successful getaway on foot. According to residents in the area, the victim is also a resident of Hannah Hill, 8 Mile Rock, and the incident occurred just feet away from his home. He was transported to the Rand Memorial Hospital via private vehicle just moments after being shot. Superintendent Lloyd is making an appeal to the public for assistance to bring this matter to a close. Police are still trying to pace, peace just to get off the, the investigation, and as a result uh, of that, uh, we are still early in our investigation. We are asking the, the public if they have any information containing this event, to please call us at uh, CDU, 8 Mile Rock Police Station, or its nearest police station. As of last report, the victim was detained at the hospital in critical condition, and a 26-year-old man is said to be assisting police with their investigations. Meantime, Superintendent Lloyd is urging everyone to be extremely vigilant and cautious during this Yuletide season. Be extremely careful during the season. Uh, know the area. Uh, be vigilant of their surroundings. And of course, uh, uh, if anything alerted them, the police call the police and uh, we will respond in a timely manner. Police are actively investigating the matter. Kimberly Mullings, ZNS Network News. Well, another crowning moment for a leading government agency on Grand Bahama as the program expands its reach to West End. This Christmas Eve, the Deputy Prime Minister traveled to Grand Bahama for a special presentation to three families who are the beneficiaries of this latest initiative. Joe Navis will report. For the Deputy Prime Minister and Minister for Urban Development, the Honorable Philip Brave Davis, it was an historic moment for the award-winning Urban Renewal Program and its Grand Bahama team. For many, including leading government officials, there was much to celebrate in West End Grand Bahama on Christmas Eve. The government, through Prime Minister the Right Honorable Perry Christie, inspired Urban Renewal 2.0 initiative, making history in the West End area. Wednesday morning, three residents of West End, the recipients of keys to a new residence. As the oldest West Ender, 96-year-old Alicia Thompson, performed the official honor during the ribbon-cutting ceremony. For the Deputy Prime Minister, this major redevelopment project was a labor of love, in keeping with the mandate of the social agency and epitomizes the real reason for the season. Urban Renewal has been touching people, busy building communities, busy changing lives. And this time, in truth, this is, Minister, a West End move. Yes, sir. <laughs> 
this move is the product of innovation. It is an innovation that was ignited by a need that could not be settled by bureaucratic ideologies. Thinking outside the proverbial box is the essence of this West End move. This celebration today evidences but one of 76 homes repaired at a cost of just under $80,000. Member of Parliament for West End and Bimini, the Honorable Obi Wolschkam, along with the Deputy Director of Urban Renewal, Michelle Rackley, say, this mammoth undertaking transcends politics, promotes Christian charity, and is designed to meet a dire need. Meanwhile, recipients Emma Deal, Talmadge Nesbitt, and Lynette Nesbitt say their new home is a Christmas miracle. Today, we have chosen individuals who receive this wonderful piece of work. And these individuals don't represent a political party. They represent human beings. They represent God creations. They represent soldiers of a society, people who all need help. I personally feel that this program is one of the best programs any government can offer. And anyone who does not embrace this program, then something must be wrong. There is no political sign on any of these families. These families are Bahamians who are in need, and this is what we do. We bring hope and help to all. While the naysayers might feel or see different, we prove them wrong for every time. Awesome, awesome. Couldn't be better. It's like a new world, brown new world. I'm already happy. I get a house, get something to live in, and it's nice and good. Beautiful. When they first come and tell me, I can't believe it. I, I was, I can't believe that. <laughs> I cried, I cried so much. I can't believe that. Recipients of this historic gift, it could not have come at a better time on Christmas Eve. They say it's a gift that keeps on giving, and one that clearly says, Merry Christmas. And West End Grand Bahama reporting for ZNS Network News, I'm Joan Davis Roll. Thanks, Joan. While well, the Minister for Grand Bahama and a delegation from the Grand Bahama Health Services heading a tour of the newly renovated Hawksville Clinic today. As Italia Hall tells us, the changes at this facility will impact health care in the Southern District. Renovations are completed at the Hawksville Clinic. The mandate of the Public Hospital Authority is to improve the access of health care from east to west on Grand Bahama. The project is said to have cost over $327,000 and Minister for Grand Bahama Michael Darville says the clinic is now in alignment with international standards and is able to handle infectious diseases such as Ebola. It is important to note that the reopening of the Hawksville Clinic will offer immediate uh, improvement to the quality of lives for the more 4,000 residents in the Hunters, Pindus Point, Lewis Yard, Mactown, and Hawksville area, and will allow for them to have easy access. I want to say that again. Easy, efficient access to primary health care facilities without traveling far outside of their communities. Managing Director of the Public Hospitals Authority, Herbert Brown, says he will ensure that services are improved before a national health insurance is introduced on January 15, 2015. And he thanks all staff and members of the public for their patience. We promise to transform community clinics into community wellness centers. So today I am pleased to report that renovations to the Hawksville Clinic have been completed. The scope of works undertaken at the clinic was extensive. Included in that renovation was electrical refurbishment, installation of lights in the interior as well as the exterior, drainage, new roof, and certainly the change of all of the air conditioning system. 
Both Minister Darville and the PHA Managing Director then welcomed Sharon Williams back to Grand Bahama as the hospital administrator. Williams, who served as administrator at the Ram Memorial Hospital before transferring to New Providence for a short stint, says she's happy to be back to help develop health care on the island. The government and the Public Hospitals Authority have provided me a very clear and aggressive mandate for the immediate and future needs of our residents, and I look forward to joining the staff of the Grand Bahama Health Services in supporting community initiatives to strengthen our health system and address the challenges that have been identified. As noted by our managing director, we plan to place emphasis on community and primary health care programs and services that are conducive to improving and maintaining optimal health for our people. All services at the Hawksville Clinic are scheduled to resume on Monday, December 29th. Italia Hall, ZNS Network News. Stay with us, there is more news right after this. Happy holidays from all of us here at the ZNS Network. Welcome back. With just one day left before Christmas, the streets of Grand Bahama are busy as many residents try to pick up their last-minute items. Our ZNS News team visited some of the jewelry stores in a popular shopping mecca to find out how sales are going. Fine jewelry is always a good gift during Christmas time and many rushed into the Port Lakaya shopping area to pick up their last minute items. This year, manager at Freeport Jewelers, Lauren Madu says they did things a little different by holding 12 days of giving, an initiative that enters customers who spend over $50 into a raffle. She says they also have many sales and specials. We have the Dancing Diamonds, which are very, very popular now. A lot of people would have heard of it. Um, we have the Movado Bold, which is also very popular. We have Ray-Bans, we have Fossil, G-Shock. Um, we have everything, anything uh, and all the different price ranges. Over at Columbian Emeralds, store manager Sharon Stanford says they are also working hard to assist customers to find the right gift. We have sale on gold merchandise as always and our watch department. We always have sales on those pieces and some specialty items as well. Some of our hot sellers this year are so definitely Michael Kors. Um, we've been selling pretty much almost all of them, um, but we still have some more. So for those of you out there who's still looking for that beautiful Michael Kors watch, come on by. Unfortunately, most stores are reporting that sales have not been so good this year. However, they will remain open late on Christmas Eve. It's a little bit down this year, but listen, we're still um, appreciative and we're still, you know, we still have two days pretty much left. So we're looking forward to some great things happening still, even though the economy is a little bit rough. Well, the countdown is on to the 2015 New Year's Junkanoo Parade here on Grand Bahama. The top groups are hard at it in the shacks, getting ready for the big showdown. Tonight, Kimberly Mullings takes us into the Swingers Shack for a preview of what's to come on New Year's Day. If you ain't ready, Swingers ain't taking no prisoners again this year. It's that time of year again. Tis the season for Junkanoo. We at the shack with the swingers who are cutting and pacing away. Co-leader Michael Miller took some time out to tell us that this year, they're coming with something new and refreshing. A Wild Wild West theme like no other. For many years, the themes in Grandma has been kind of boring. Um, we just decided to step outside of the box of something that has not been on the road in Grand Bahama. Um, and we just decided to give the Grand, the Grand Bahamians a um, uh, sort of sight on, or uh, uh, outlook on the Wild West, back in the day of the Wild West, the Cowboys and Indians. Miller says if you've ever been a fan of any of the Western movies, you won't want to miss their display of costumes like the Sitting Bull, Buffalo Soldier, who shot Jesse James, and the great stagecoach robbery. So you're going to actually see, it's almost as if you actually were in the Wild West, so... You can bring your guns and your arrows, your bow and arrows, because um, it's going to be a war between the cowboys 
it's going to be a war between the Cowboys and Indians out there. Be sure to look out for the swingers who plan to dominate the streets even before the New Year's Day Parade. What I'd like to say is that we are now the three-time defending champions. Three-time. We are going into Eight Mile Rock on Boxing Day to take part in the um, Boxing Day Parade in Eight Mile Rock. Um, we're looking forward to becoming four-time champion. And come New Year's, we're going to put on a show for Grand Bamis, like we always do. Along with the fringing, some of the Junkanoors were streaking their costumes, adding those little details which make such a big difference. And the costume like this takes you about two months. It depends on how you, how much time you put in there, you come in the shop, put in some hours. It'll take you a less time, but right now, just streaking, tricking up the costume, getting it ready for January 1. It gets better. The swingers got word that another group is coming out with the exact same Wild Wild West theme, and they have a few words of advice, or not, for them. They, they say they are superstars, but they haven't proven nothing to me yet. Because every year, uh, the swingers come out and we be victorious. So, you are bringing cowboys, don't come at it. You are out. Cowboys, no time. Indians and cowboys, you come. Y'all jump on board, come get your beaten. This year is a different level. So come, be ready. And over. See you New Year's Day. Kimberly Mullings, ZNS Network News. It's over, he says. Well, one concerned citizen doing her best to make this Christmas a good one for some of the less fortunate here on Grand Bahama Island. For the ninth consecutive year, the kitchen at Foster B. Pastina Center will serve as a feeding center this Christmas Day as Cabrina Bo Adderley and friends cook up a scrumptious meal for the needy of the community. This labor of love, she says, is in memory of her mother who passed away in 2004. I'm a member of Modern Free and Accepted Mason and my determination to help people because there are a lot of per persons who are hurting and they need help but they, they, they do not want to be publicized and they want to be treated like everybody else. I normally feed all the home for the aged okay we would package their food and normally they'd come and pick them up we have them ready for them okay because I will recontact them already and so they know tomorrow morning 11 o'clock they'll come and pick up all, um, all the food for their homes and remember to get your tickets early for the West Grand Bahama District 8 Mile Rock Boxing Day Committee's Junkanoo Wash Out at the Sunset Village in 8 Mile Rock, December 25th and 26th. This historic parade begins at 3.30 a.m. Stay with us, Ricardo Liborn, as a check on sports when we return. Hey everybody and welcome to Sports and Ricardo Live One. This is Santa. Christmas is tomorrow. Now this one also goes out to the person that took the Miami Heat bag off of Valeria today with the name Edith Lightbone on it. Listen, it's Christmas Eve, okay? Return the bag, bring it here to ZNS. That is my Christmas Eve wish. Because some kids got some things to get. Crusader Center annual uh, basketball tournament folk finals was simply an entertaining one with the better games played like we've seen in the past. Ridley College and Tabernacle Academy went to this one and the coaches says they're looking at some positive things. The Tabernacle Falcons played team basketball to capture the Crusaders invitational title. The calculated shooting from the arc in the fourth period sealed the deal. Franco Miller Jr. netted 18 points and was named the most valuable player for good reason. The young man was hot from the arc in the 53-48 win. Ridley Tigers' Brett Warren tried to keep this one close. Ridley Tigers played with hard determination and they're also talking about returning next year and a possible visit to Canada. Well, we'd like to continue this. We've already had a request by uh, one or two teams to come to our tournament next year. So hopefully that'll come to fruition. And uh, we're already planning on how we can uh, raise some money to come back. Uh, the hospitality here is great. The basketball is a little different style. You guys run and gun a little bit more and you play a lot more zone back home. But I think the transition game is good for us. Uh, it's only going to make us a better basketball team. As for the Tabernacle Falcons, the tournament will set them up for their annual trip north. The Crusaders championship celebration was short-lived because they're headed to the Arby's this week. Still really good, especially about the first game. We know who we're playing. I give us a very good chance of winning that first game. We've just got to adjust to the style of play. 
The second game would be a lot tougher, uh, but, you know, like I always tell these guys, I can take you uh, to where the opportunities are. You have to take advantage of the opportunities. I, I, there's no scholarships under my table. Coaches will be there. Coaches will see you. If you can perform and do what you're supposed to do, somebody will express an interest and you'll save your parents a pretty penny in terms of a college education. The Sunland Stingers are off to Orlando for tournament play and St. George's will go to the Holiday Classic. Congrats to all the players and coordinators of a successful tournament. As the Salvador Caciques also traveled north to take part in the Father Marsh and Peters and also the second annual Quinton Three Young Hall Junior Basketball Tournament. I spoke to Coach Stephen S. Brown who said it's a long track to come from St. Sal to Grand Bahama. We played very well. I mean, we came on the 6 o'clock flight and <laughs> we were pretty toxic. We just came on the tournament in Father Marsh and Peters tournament and we came down here. Uh, we played at 10 o'clock. Um, we played our first three games. We were victorious. We came back and we had to play um, St. John's for the pool division championship. And they, you know, we, we lost that one. That's why we, we ended up getting knocked out. Well, there are some challenges, he says, in San Salvador. But the intent down south is to always be a contender. That's S. Brown talking. We use basketball as a, as a way and a means to, to help them develop from boys to men. Uh, this is a sport they like, so we just try to train them to understand basketball is just like life. You know, um, you, you, you use this game uh, to, to develop yourself, to be better. Use the same game to, use, uh, to develop yourself in life. So, you know, down south, um, we don't have much that we can get involved with, other activities. Uh, in San Salvador, you know, we, we don't have so much, um, like, you know, the track and field or the softball diamond, but we have a basketball uh, facilities, and then we use that to help develop these young men. I hope, hope you're ready for Christmas. Santa is here. That's a look at Sports Night. She didn't stop laughing. We're coming right back. Don't go nowhere. <laughs>